Welcome back to our shop here at KK Custom Leather. Today I intend to uh, try and show you how the carvings are put into your products, which are all handcrafted by a well-skilled craftsman like myself. <laughs> <laughs> at least I'm, I'm getting there. I'm not quite there yet. I always say I've got lots of lots to go on it. But anyways, um, what we do is we'll get a picture. You can use your, your printer. I'm trying not to make too much crinkling because it makes noise. I'll take a picture off my uh, computer, print it out. So in this case, I'm, I'm working on a Harley Davidson logo. So here's the logo. This is going to end up on the uh, product when I'm finished. I, ha I have one that I can show you where it is on a, on a piece of leather finished up. Some almost finished up. Anyways, this is the piece that comes off the printer. What we have to do is take a transparent, clear piece of plastic and we trace it onto this piece of transparency. So we will take our paper, we lay it on top of the leather. In this case, I've sped, speeded it up a little bit for you, and I've actually drawn the, uh, the logo onto it. And from here, I would be basically laying it down. And if you can zoom in a little bit, you can see I'm tracing over top of the other design. I'm tracing the lines in on it. And as I trace the, the lines into it, they're going to remain on top of the piece of transparency plastic. So once I'm finished tracing out that full logo, I will pull the sheet off of here. Again, you want to have it taped so it doesn't move when you're doing it, because if, you, if it moves, the lines aren't going to line up. I'm going to just place this against the uh, a piece of darker material. You can actually see how I've traced that out onto the, uh, the uh, film. We'll call it film for the best of words here, this film. So now this allows me to take it and place it on top of the leather. I'm going to come back to a picture after with this logo in it finished. But what I want to show you, sometimes you uh, use the same drawing over and over and over. Sometimes you can get a, a craft aid. They come usually in sheets. I've got a piece of uh, one of the craft aids. I've actually cut this out because... Uh, it's, it's great for doing my rifle slings. It saves me lots of time. I would have to sit there going through this procedure each time. Again, it's going to be very hard to see because it is a plastic film. And it actually has a, uh, a, uh, a ridge on there in the shape of the deer. So that's going to allow me to just rub it right onto my piece of leather. But before it will go onto the leather, when you're doing that, when you're, you're putting it from the film or the... Uh, the craft aid onto the leather you want to case your leather with water so this is one of my blank rifle straps I've cut it out from a strip of leather and this is where the uh, deer is going to be designed onto the leather so now I was mentioning about uh, taking this film doing the drawing and then later putting it onto the product I happen to have a finished product of what it would look like when this has been designed into the leather and here is the logo ready to be put together. I've shown you guys how to trace the logo onto the film. Now I'm going to show you how we transfer the fit from the film to your product. However, this time, instead of using this film, I'm going to show you through the craft aid how it's done. This is the deer head I'm going to put on from our craft aid onto this leather strap in here. So what we have to do, first thing, whenever you put a design into leather, you want to quench the uh, material in water to make it a little bit more malleable. So I have a little spray bottle here. Now I'm just going to turn the other way so I don't get the cameraman all soaking wet. Because then they'll leave it and I won't have anybody to, to film me. And usually I'll case both sides of the, of the uh, product of the leather here with water. We're going to let it dry for a little bit, and I don't think you'd be able to see it with the camera, but it actually soaks into the, into the leather. I'm going to spray just a little bit here. You can actually see it soaking into the leather. Now, the ideal thing to do when you're doing that is to let it sit for a bit, and to know that it is really good for, for uh, tooling. We call it tooling when you put the impressions into leather. Is to take it and place it against the side of your cheek, and it should have a little cool feeling on it and when it has that cool feeling you know that it's been dampened and it's ready to tool this here is so cool and you really don't have to be much of an artist to do this you just have to be able to keep the uh, 
plastic in one place. So I'm going to place that on top of the leather where I'm going to put it. And this is a homemade one that we've made. You can use a pencil, you could use, you want something big and heavy or strong so it's solid. And you're going to, we're going to rub this into the leather without moving the plastic. So we situate the deer right on the, uh, on the sling here. And we're going to start pressing it in, going over those lines. And this is actually putting the indentation right into the leather as if I would trace it. When I remove this, if I did this correctly, I should have the deer head on the leather and you can actually see it there. We, from this point, we will start our carving into the leather. Okay, now to put the carving into the leather, we use a swiv swivel blade knife or we can do it with a, a heat knife. So to show you, in the olden days, they used to use this device here. It's a stylus for doing carvings. And this is called the saddle. Your finger sits on top of it. And this turns around and allows you to steer it like you would a steering wheel on a car. And you can carve right into it. But with the new technology that's come out, we actually burn, uh, cut into the uh, sling. And it's a little, you have a lot more dexterity. So sometimes I'll use this, sometimes I'll go to the new technology, which is this machine right up here. And it uses heat and this machine, I turn, I have a, a switch on it so I don't burn the place down because this machine can get so hot that you can actually start a fire. I, can, I could cut the leather right in half with this. As you can see, it gets cherry red. I don't want it that hot. I just want to have it so it cuts into the carving that I'm going to do. So our cameraman will uh, kind of come in close to the carving. My hand might be in the way as we're doing it a little bit. We'll try and uh, make it so you can see. I'm placing it down on there and I am actually cutting it into the leather. And it's almost like holding a pencil and drawing it on your leather. You can see cutting into it. This is the beginning of it. This is where the shape all begins from. This heat gun again allows me to do some neat effects and makes it, I call it, makes it pop a little bit more, the design. You know. I'm not telling you notice I'm not talking as much because I'm really starting to concentrate a little bit on what I'm doing. So after all, we want it to look like a deer when I'm finished. This is what more or less what I call my coloring book here. Leather is something that I allows me to be creative, create different things, and it's something like Someone who loves coloring and coloring books, well, this is this is my coloring book here. I do all, any kind of image that I can trace, I can usually tool into the leather, depending on sizes of the of the object that I'm gonna design. I have to be able to trace it. This is like a one di one dimensional object right now when I start doing the tooling it's going to make it pop it's going to give it some depth and make it look like it's going to jump right out of the leather when we're finished On the antlers, it has a bunch of little dots. With this little machine, I can just put the little speckles in there, which will show up really nicely on the on the product later on. Like I say, the dexterity of this is a lot nicer. I can do smaller effects on it, which I'm going to do with the some of the facial parts of it right away here.
the creases where the where the uh, cheekbones and muscle pop out I can accentuate it a little bit just by doing a little dotting of the tool here it cuts into it and it gives it a little bit it's starting to give it a little bit of characteristic Now you can see the, the beginning where it's ready to be tooled. This is called the carving part of the leather, of the design into the leather. From here, we'll put some depth to it now and make it so it stands out and pops right out of the leather. And when I'm done this, it's there literally for life, the life of the product. It's all hand cool, tooled, all hand carved. It's all done by myself and my wife here on the premises. If you notice the emblem on my shirt with the KK Custom Leather, I have the original seven tools. They are the basic tools of carving uh, of carving and tooling. With the, those tools, we put all our designs into the leather. So I figured when I started my company, it'd be nice to have that incorporated on our shirts so that I can show people this is the tools that we use to make these designs and craft everything from it. These here are some of the tools I've got a tool belt I've designed with more tools. I've got also on the far side with all my clutter. I've got a whole bunch more that I use. But these are the basic tools that I use a lot of. So I try to tend to keep them all over the place in front of me more often. And I'm just going to dig out a couple of the tools that I'm going to be using here. And we'll be set to go. Now that I have some of the tools that I use in front of me, the ones I most use, I'm placing them in front of me so I'm ready to start some of the tooling procedures here. Uh, this here is called a maul. You can also use a dead blow hammer, or a, a two by four, or whatever you want. This is a craft that's really easy. When I need it, I can drop it, I can pick it back up, and it has a little bit of weight. So with this here, we will now start our tooling into the leather. If you notice the tips of these tools, they have different shapes. One of them has like a checkered. These are called bevelers. The bevelers allow me to bevel the lines around the uh, character that I'm carving out. So I'm going to start going around the bottom of the deer here. It does take a little bit of time to get used to uh, doing this properly and being accurate. I used to be an instructor at Tandy teaching people how to tool these here and that's where I actually got into saying hey this is what I want to do for a career I'd love to be able to put on classes however with the uh, licensing that I have in order to operate my shop out of my premises it does not allow me to do that so I've sort of missed that and I would love to be able to, to put on classes like this maybe in the some later when I have more time to do things maybe I can hold it in different different places and that you're seeing the outside edge now of it taking shape it's starting to pop out a little bit we're going to turn this here i'm going to work the other way on the bottom part of it I didn't become an artist at this doing doing this overnight. It has taken a little bit of practice. And it started as a hobby. It's a fun, it's really a fun thing to uh, to do. I crave it sometimes when I'm not doing it for any length of time. It's just like if you have a favorite coloring book and you use it every day and then you're you're away somewhere and you can't get back to that coloring book, well you miss it. So it's the same thing with this here. Starting to really pop out of it now. 
looking at different ways I can set up this here to uh, to other areas here. I'm going to get right inside the ear here and give it a little bit of depth in there. Same thing on this side here. Now I'm going to switch over to one of my round bev rounded bevelers here, which is going to allow me to do the circular areas inside here. This is just beveling it so that I can get my other checkered beveler in there. And all the rounded areas. And then I'll turn it the other way so I get down to the other side. You have to have a little room to be able to, to turn and twist and get things placed in there. I'm going to the round one here. You're actually starting to see it take shape in front of your eyes here. So there is a lot of work going into it, a lot of tender love and care. Each one is done individually. So every time I do something like this, I'm putting my heart and soul into it, creating a one of a kind, because there never are two that are the same. The only thing that can create something that's the same is when it's just stamped into the, to the leather. If you can get stuff for that, if you're doing multiples, we can get different stamps that'll put it for, for, for company name, logos, and stuff like that, that we can press it in with one stamping. But in this case, when we're doing animal heads, stuff like that, I want to put my heart and soul into it, make it a one of a kind. All my deers have a lift, different face on them. Just like every other individual note. Not too many people all look the same. Sometimes you get twins and stuff like that, but in this case, it's all handmade so they're not looking identical. They're really starting to pop out now as we go in there. I'm gonna switch it around, get the other side. Once it's all created, then we use the different dyes and give it a little bit of color as well. And we antique it so that it pops a little bit more, makes it look a little bit more true. After I use this, I'll go back to our heat gun again and we'll, we'll put a bit more detail into it again. Now I'm going to use the beveler that has no checkering on that. And I'll use that in the areas where the where the face is and places that I don't want to put any checking, checking, checkered beveling into. Because you don't want to have the checkered impressions on the face of the deer and places. Here I am going along and we're putting a little bit in indentation around the ears and getting it so that it looks pretty good here. Now, once I once I get that, you, if you come in really close to it, you'll see the edges of the deer are really, really square. What I want to do with that is I want to round those off and give it a nice smooth contrast. So to remove these edges and give make it look really nice and smooth, I use it's a called a I believe it's called a facing beveler. It allows you to round it's gonna round those edges for us and give it a nice smooth appearance. And here I'm not really pounding away hard, it's just a matter of taking it along and working it along the edges. You can see the the edges are are coming out of it and it's putting a nice smooth look on it. The other way, we'll do the same on that. The smoothing the edges on the uh, are smoothing the edges on the cur curvings that I'm doing usually are very popular on doing animals and faces, stuff like that. Around the 
inside of the antler. Sometimes it's pretty tough to get in there. Sort of do the best you can. And okay, so we've gotten to that part pretty good. I'm going to find another tool in here, which I should have. It's over here. It's a funny looking thing. almost looks like a Christmas tree. We want to put a tiny bit of hair on the on the neck of the of the deer give it a little bit of characteristic so here we're going to take it like this here just there now now you've got a little bit of hair it's, it's putting a little bit more character into it around the eyes that rounded beveler will round off the eyeballs a little bit so they're not so square a little bit on each side you don't have to hit it too hard just very lightly and you're getting the indentation of that I'm going to go back to my heat gun now and we're going to make sure this is on still and if I forget it it shuts off automatically so we still have a shop to come back to later on. Here I'm going to put little marks in there to, to roughen up the ear and make it look a little realistic. If you can zoom in close so you can see what I'm doing in here. It's roughening up making it have a little bit of characteristic in there. Now the deer here, where I've done the beveling on the inside of the ear, I am just going to indent that a little bit in some places to give it a little bit of depth. Like I say, this is usually around the cheekbones and stuff, so you'll have a little bit of uh, curving on the face where your where cheeks are. You notice your face isn't isn't flat, so. This is basically doing the same thing. It's taking off the uh, the one one D appearance of the uh, carving and turning into more of a three D. So now we're really starting to look like a deer here. From here, the deer's off a white. I missed a spot, so you have to go over many times. Right over in here, you can see it's still flush. I want to round that off a little bit in the ear. So we'll put that in there and that drops that down. Now you notice the deer is a little bit white. We got another tool with our heat gun here. And I have it plugged in on the other side. I just got to find it. Watch so I don't burn myself because it does get hot. I'm going to turn up the heat on. This is like a little spoon on here. You can actually see it's just like a spoon. And what I'm going to do is it's up a little hotter. I could spray it down. I should probably so I don't, so I don't burn it because it's very, it's very hot. I want to, I can use this to actually color the deer and make it a brown a little bit. So what, that's what I'm going to do. So if you zoom right in on the deer here, I'm just going to try and place it down here. So I get in here and I'm going to run it up and down. And it's not going to work until I switch this switch here over to go to the other setting. It doesn't do anything unless you have the heat. Now I should have the heat. I'm not going to put it against my skin to try it. Here yeah, I can feel it working now. I'm actually coloring the leather, the deer brown. I'm making them a darker color. And this will, this will add in with the shading along with the stains and dyes that I put into it. This is a characteristic that I can't do with the with that other swivel blade knife. So the technology is, is really cool, the way that it... And then I can put a little bit more emphasis on the ears there. And I can have it a little darker in spots. This is making it look really stand out like a like a deer. One around inside these little spots here where the nose is. And I think we're going to pretty much stop it at that point there. And that is now ready to go into the, uh, the next space where we'll be doing colors and stuff like that. I probably won't show you on this video. You're always welcome to come by. I can show you how they're done when you come by my shop. But I thought it would be very interesting to show you that these things aren't just uh, bought with the... Uh, different designs on it. We are actually making the designs on there for you. They are handcrafted and they're one of a kind. And they're meant to last the life of the rifle sling here in this instance. And something you're going to be very proud of to have something really nice when you want to show a product that you really love. And this can go on for other products that you use that you want to have a special logo on there or something like that. We do this sort of stuff for other items. So that pretty much concludes how the 
animal head is put onto the uh, leather for you.